The idea of this talk is, is, is to share with you the, um, the, the effort that went into um, moving the sidebar uh, and make it available um, uh, in Collabora Online and on the web. Um, and specifically, I want to make this interesting to um, the technical minded uh, amongst us, and I hope that's everybody, um, in that I share a little bit of the technical challenges there. So this is, this is the overview of, of my talk. It's, it's not an, an extremely long or detailed talk, so, um, so hopefully there's going to be something for everybody and we have time for questions. I'm going to skip introductions. I'm guessing most people know me by now, and if, if that's not the case, just approach me approach me um, after, after the talk. Is this better? Is this, is this better? Okay. If it's not, just let me know. Um, just approach me if, 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 you, if you don't know me and introduce yourself. I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you. Um, we'll take a quick look at what, what really is the sidebar and why we need it um, quickly, just to, to make sure we're all, all on the same page. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the challenges. Why is this even something to talk about, right? I mean, you would think it's, it's there, it's working, we have all the functionality implemented. How hard can it be? And those are usually famous last words. Um, the idea is that I don't want to give you just a superficial taste of things, but I also want to talk a little bit about some of the technical details. So, so what, is this? what is the sidebar? Um, this is the sidebar. That we see it on the desktop. Um, it, it's, it's typically on the right side. It's docked and nice, and um, you get to undock it if you want and move it around. Um, it has all the context-sensitive uh, properties um, that uh, you would need, depending on what you're doing. So if you're, if you're typing a bit of text and you want a quick way to change the font size, there, there, there it is. It's, it's right on, on, on the sidebar. Um, change the color. If you select um, uh, an image, maybe, you would get slightly different properties. And so it's, it's actually you know, moving with you so that whenever you need to um, make any adjustments, it's accessible um, and it's always where you need them to be. So much, much better than menus. Um, and this, this would be our end product, right? This is, this is what, what we're trying to do. We're trying to um, bring the same functionality, um, hopefully in a slightly refined um, UI um, um, elements um, on the web. And, and here you can see that we have two, two different cases. This is, this is Calc, right, and this is Writer. Um, you see and both of them um, are working in the same way, except that you, you, you do get a um, different context, um, because here we have the graph selected, right? So you get area and shadow, um, whereas over there, um, it's clearly some text where the cursor is, because you get text style and character properties and spacing um, uh, as your context. Okay, um, so this this effort is 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 not trivial, right? And and we always have to um, take a moment and remember that it wouldn't happen automatically, um, and it takes uh, a lot of uh, partnership um, and funding to to make this happen. So thank you to our partners there. Um, so really, how hard is it to bring this? kind of interface and functionality and make it work um, on the web. You would think you have the same kind of um, you know, environment as, as on the desktop. You have a, 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 an application that, that renders um, UI elements for you. You have mouse and keyboard input, right? And so you, get, you, have, you have pretty much the foundation. But in fact, what, what really happens is, is that the similarities end very quickly, um, much sooner than you would have liked them to. So for example, the sidebar is, is very much like a dialogue, right? Like a pop-up dialogue you would get when you're, you're, you go into the menu paragraph, right? You get this dialogue, nice tabs and, and whatnot. So, you know, this is a reasonable thing to, to um, use the dialogue infrastructure that we already had in Collabora Online working um, to build essentially the uh, sidebar functionality. H however, it's not quite like a um, dialogue. Um, the sidebar in that it is, it is not really uh, something you uh, bring up to the front, change a setting, and then dismiss it. You actually want it to be around, and you want it to be um, updated automatically 
uh, based on the context like you expect on the desktop. Um, but also on the desktop, it's docked. So you get it you know, flexibly resized based on the height of your window and so on. So you would want that kind of behavior as well. So you don't want something uh, extremely rigid either. Um, and uh, unlike the, um, the, uh, um, the, the, unlike the, the dialogues, the sidebar needs to push your content out of the way, right? In a way that you're, what you're actually doing is you're not covering the content because now you have the sidebar. Rather, you're resizing the content to make it shrink because you want to, 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 to maintain the same view, right, as you had, but now slightly smaller to accommodate for the um, real state that the sidebar is going to take. So th there is a little, you know, a bit of, um, uh, you know, differences there and, and a bit of challenge. So I want to take a small step back, and uh, people who have missed the um, presentations in the past years on the dialogue tunneling work. So um, again, we make sure that we're uh, on a similar footing here. Um, what really happens under the hood is that when you uh, have a dialogue um, pop up, really what is happening is um, we have uh, infrastructure. We built this API where what we do is we figure out, oh, we are actually um, running this whole show online on the web, uh, and so we need to know that um, a new window has been created, um, and then that the window has been resized, and then that the, uh, there is an update in the UI, so we need to invalidate certain areas. Uh, and then, oh, the, the mouse actually is moving, right? So if that changes the rendering of the UI, you also want to update that. So there is a, a whole plumbing going on, uh, even with the mouse movement, let alone when you type or when you click. All of these events go back to um, the core, uh, and then we have new events generated to notify um, the web that, well, you know, things change, what do you want to do now? And then the JavaScript part would come in and say, oh, why don't you render this area? Because I hear you've invalidated the last one and I got the, you know, the old version. So just give me the latest one. Um, and so that's what happens. We render uh, whatever area that, that is being requested as a PNG um, image and we send that along to the browser and then the browser will know where to um, make sure that is rendered in the UI and everything works um, nice and smooth and you don't even notice that you're actually um, dealing with images all the time. Now, having said that the dialogue is really a, a, a very close rel relative to the sidebar, it means we can actually reuse it, but we have to be careful. So one of the things we, we, we want to do is we want to differentiate between creating a sidebar, which you can only create one of, right? So if there is more than one sidebar creation that is happening, it just means that you're replacing the previous one, right? Unlike dialogues, dialogues you can have multiple ones on the, on the screen, but the sidebar you really want to have one. This just doesn't make any sense to have multiple ones. Um, and that is not supported in, in, in core um, anyway. Um, so we do track that we have a new type uh, that tells you this is not a dialogue really. Um, and you'll see that we have a third type um, as well. I'll get to that. Um, so we have one for sidebar and one for dialogues in general. Um, and we remember um, uh, this fact and we track sidebars separately from dialogues. So you can dismiss dialogues, you can't dismiss sidebars um, simply by, do, by going around you know, editing your document. You actually need to, um, it, it, from the menu, say view and then you click on sidebar and it toggles. If it was hidden, you see it. If it was visible, you hide it. That's, that's how you um, react to this, you know, um, deal with the sidebar. Um, as I mentioned, we need it docked, and that means we need to push around the contents. So again, this is a bit of special handling where we say, oh, now we're showing the sidebar. Um, it is a special kind of a dialogue where we move around the HTML elements such that we make room for our sidebar um, and we push everything out of the way so that there is no overlap between them. And then we need to revert this process where when we hide the sidebar, you want to bring everything back to 100% and your content takes um, the whole um, um, available real estate. Um, 
To support resizing automatically, we had to add a bit of an API to support that functionality, where in the browser, when we notice that the, the HTML elements where we embed the sidebar um, got their dimensions changed, we also need to let Core know um, that the sidebar now ha has a different um, um, height. Um, the width for now is fixed, but it is supported. You can actually change it, but we, 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 we don't have that implemented in the UI. So the user is unable to change it, um, um, but, but, but the height is automatically resized. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that because it's, um, it, it's quite interesting, the challenges we have there. Um, so this is roughly how you break down um, the sidebar. This is obviously floating. It's, um, it's not docked, so it's undocked. Um, and it's, uh, it has multiple sections in reality. Um, uh, what is really interesting here is that this, this whole red um, area, um, that's the sidebar docking window in core. That's, that's how it's identified. Um, and within it, um, you have the panels in the UI level, right? And the panels are the ones that, that you can collapse with the arrow, like style, character, and paragraph, right? And these are essentially um, flexible in their, in their dimension. So when you collapse them, they, they only take the heading size um, in, in space. Um, otherwise, you can expand them and you can scroll around. This is on desktop. You can, you can notice that. Um, you can't undock um, in the browser. Um, and you see if, it's, if it takes more um, height than you have in your main floating window, there is a, there is a scroll bar nice and neat. This is a nightmare. I'll come to later. Um, you can see that in, in, in the code, actually, it's, it, for, for um, those who are interested in mapping this to, to the code, there is actually a hierarchy. So the docking window has a controller, and the controller has decks. And each deck is essentially one of those icons on the side. So um, you can switch between the properties and gallery and the other ones. Um, and that switches the decks. And every deck has a number of panels in it, right? Um, and you also have the tab bar, which is that blue uh, block. That's, that's the side tab bar. So the tab bar we really don't need um, in uh, the browser. Um, instead, we have those icons as um, toolbar icons, and you can, you can switch from the toolbar, um, primarily because there is not um, that much real state, and we, we, we need to be a little bit conservative. Um, just as a, as a side point, um, the, the parent of the docking window is called sidebar child window. Um, just um, an interesting... Um, trick of mind to, to leave, you know, let, lead people astray, essentially, um, and waste a bunch of time. Um, so this is the, uh, the uh, interesting challenge, or one of the challenges that you get when you're trying to move a UI element, um, like a dialog, um, to the web, which uh, part of that UI control or, or window, or, or in this case, uh, the, the um, dockable floating window that you want to render online? That's uh, uh, the, the real question, right? And um, as you saw, you have, you have this um, docking window. Inside it, you have um, decks, and every deck has its own panels. And w w so what, w how do you want this rendering process to happen? Do you, you really want to render everything and lose control over um, which deck is now visible? Or you want to maybe render the panels separately? Then you can arrange them how you want, and you have more control. Um, what is the right answer? And so one of the first things we tried is we tried rendering the decks. So every deck um, gets its own uh, plumbing and tunneling. To the, um, to, to the JavaScript. Um, that didn't really work out very well. And the, you, you, you might guess why that happened. And in hindsight, it makes sense. Uh, the problem there is that the decks really are not created and destroyed. And that's what we, we, we want to um, track. We want to track the lifetime of the dialogue. Um, but in, in the sidebar, what's happening is you show a deck, and then you hide a deck, and then you show the other deck, and you hide the deck. And so you need to track this 
uh, in, in the JavaScript, which just is a nightmare. It doesn't make sense. So we said, OK, let's actually move one level higher and render the parent that has the DEX in it. And that's the docking window. And that's what we did next. Um, Incidentally, what that meant, ultimately, is that the type um, to identify the sidebar is now called DEC. Um, so you, get you create a window of type dialog, that's all the dialogs, and you create a window that has type DEC, and that is the sidebar. That's an artifact that we just, just stayed there. Um, a, bit, a bit more um, details, um, as I mentioned, we need to resize the sidebar, and we need to resize it um, in, a, in a very special way, only when the browser is resizing. So really, we can't leave the sidebar docked in core. So LibreOffice core starts sidebar in, in the docked state. So the first thing we do is we figure out, OK, now this is, this is not the desktop. Um, and so we need to have full control over the dimensions of the sidebar, so we make it floating. Right? All of this is invisible in the background. Right? So it is floating. So we can control its dimensions however we want. Right? There is no limitation because it's not part of the frame. Um, next, we implement the API to control its size. So we can do this programmatically however we want. Next, we say we don't want the tab bar. Right? That is useless for us. Um, and we just have the um, uh, toolbar entries for all the decks that we are interested in. And uh, we are not interested in the gallery, uh, for example, in navigation. Those are not implemented at the moment. Um, so those are not there, and we don't need to worry about them. Um, and we make sure that we maximize the height of the uh, sidebar so that we can render everything nice and neat. And this is one of the technical challenges I'm going to get to in a bit. But first. Let's deal with uh, another problem, um, which is pop-ups. This, this is, um, you can see I clicked on the color uh, button. And that brings up the, um, I'm not sure what, what the name of, of this one is, the, the, I guess the um, uh, color palette, um, where you can select the color of your text. Um, and this is a pop-up. It's exactly like a context menu. Um, or for that matter, a drop-down list, like the list of the font names that you have over there. Um, and that is a separate window, right? In, in, the, in the HTML, what is happening is you have your dialog or sidebar, um, and that's your parent, and then you have a, a child of that. Uh, on the desktop, it's the same. You have this relationship. So if you kill or the parent dies, you, your child goes away as well. So you don't have a, a, a thing, a window floating around like that uh, on its own. Um, so what we do is we differentiate uh, when we create a child window from a dialog and from the sidebar, which is called a deck. And this one would be called child. And the child, when it's created, it says what is the ID of its parent. So in the JavaScript, we can track them nicely, and everything works just fine. The only difference is that the child goes away um, when you move your cursor or you uh, click somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera, as you would expect. So that's, that's fine. Now, let's look at some of the challenges. This is, this is where it gets um, technical and interesting. Um, so one of the interesting challenges is that you don't have a nice sequence of events. This is a nightmare. Um, uh, you spend a lot of time trying to iron out these um, seemingly um, anachronistic um, uh, events that you are getting from core. So normally, what you would want is you would want an announcement that a dialog or, a, or a, a, the sidebar has been created, um, updates based on the input events, and then that it is closed and everything is, is nice and, and, and fun. Um, but in reality, that doesn't happen. What happens is you get some create with often a bogus size. And this is the case for most dialogues. So you get a dimension that is 0, 0 by 0, 0 
Mm, OK, so I created a hidden window. Fine. And then you get an update for the size, right? You get an event size changed, and you get now a new dimension. So you go, all right, great. Let's now create something for the user to see. And then, oops, it changed again. Well, I, I, oh, fine, fine, we'll do that too. But then you have um, user experience problems, right? You get flickers, you get um, all, all this noise and traffic on the network. So you, you need to iron these out. So, this makes it really, really much harder um, to manage things. Why is this not a problem on the desktop, you should ask? Well, because the desktop, it's much faster. You don't have network. You don't have multiple languages, JavaScript. You know, it, the, the user does not see this, right? It, it happens so fast that it just is irrelevant. Um, so one of the things that we do for the sidebar is we can't rely on create because at creation time, the sidebar has no size, and that is completely useless. Instead, what we do, we um, create the sidebar with a sensible dimensions on the notification for the resize, which happens multiple times, as you would expect. That creates another nightmare that I will get to in, in a minute. Um, another challenge is that the sidebar... Um, will take the focus as you would expect for input. So you, when you open the sidebar, you would expect that the sidebar now is active. So anything I do will probably go to the sidebar in terms of typing something or even the mouse, right? Um, that's reasonable. Um, however, this is a problem because now the sidebar has the focus and what you want to do is you want to go back and, and type in your, in your um, document. Um, and this coordination between the two uh, can be tricky. Dialogues don't have that problem because the, you dismiss them typically, right? Um, but the sidebar can actually still the focus thinking that, oh, I, you just, you know, um, want to uh, um, have me in the foreground. Um, so it starts uh, essentially getting in the way and, and, and cause, again, us user experience problems. So we had to deal with that um, in, an, in a better way. Um, Often, LibreOffice being a large piece of um, software, it throws at you curveballs. So one of the uh, big ones <laughs> that came our way when we were working on this is that we found out that the, uh, the initialization sequence in Impress is wildly different uh, than in Calc and Writer. And this is the kind of thing that you are hoping uh, that you would never have to deal with, right? Because I mean, this is the worst kind of um, um, discrimination in the code, right? You need to actually worry about the context of which type of document the user is using. You, in your, you're in the sidebar. Like, well, well, why? And we'll see why. So a bit of background. Um, you can have multiple users. Um, working on the same document at the same time. That's the whole idea of having the web, right? Otherwise, just work on your desktop. Um, and that means that each user will get their own view. Um, in, in, in the code, these are um, referenced by the view shell and the frame view. Um, and every user, they have their own. And everything is nice and fine, because one user can have the sidebar visible, the other one does not, right? Um, one user can be working in one dialogue, the, user is in a, the other user is working in another. So you need this uh, nice segregation, and so you need to track every window um, based on the view that owns it, right? So what happens when you have a, a, a document with a sidebar? Everything is nice and fine, and you're, you know, you're finishing your PhD, and then your, I don't know, your, your um, um, supervisor logs in, and they open the same thing, and now they want to play with the sidebar to uh, highlight something in red, maybe. Um, what happens is normally you would expect that the view for this new user will be created, and then the sidebar will be created, Right? The sidebar belongs to this new view, so it gets attached to it, and everything is working nice and fine. And this happens in Calc and Writer, not in Impress. So if you're doing a, a, a presentation or working on your slides, um, what happens is the sidebar is created before the frame and the, the uh, view shell is switched to the new user. So it, it's at that point, you have the old one, not the new. Uh, so if you actually create um, the machinery 
uh, for the sidebar, uh, at that point in time, you will show the sidebar to the, to the old user and not the new one. This is a nightmare you, you, you um, see. Um, so we had to handle it um, in, in a special way. And I'm going to show you this is, this is how we handle it. Um, the, the comment explaining the, why we need to do all these um, checks is essentially explaining that we don't have the right view. Um, and what we need to do is uh, figure out if really the view has already changed or not. But this is, this is ugly because, because if you are the first view, you, there is no old and new. There is only one. <laughs> so you need to special case the special case, right? Um, if, you, if you are a second or subsequent view, there is always an old one and the sidebar is being created whilst the old one is still active. So you want to wait until you get this size notification um, on the new one. So you track the old one with this MP old view shell and you compare it with the current one. And if it is changed, you're like, yay. But what do you do if you're the first one? There is no old, right? So, so again, you need, you need to take that into account. And this is what, what it's trying to do. And there is an, a, a long explanation that you know, we need to do this so that we avoid uh, messing the sidebar. Um, last uh, point is the vertical scroll bar, as I promised that I will return to. Um, so normally, when you say this is the, the, the dimensions of my sidebar, you expect things to just you know, flow in it. And if it's bigger than your size, you get the scroll bar. But we don't want that scroll bar, because it's extremely slow to scroll the, the window and render multiple times whilst you're uh, doing this. It's, it's really horrible. So what we, we really want to do is we want to figure out the actual size of the sidebar, how high it is. Um, and then we say, render it, give me the image, and I will just show it and scroll in the browser. And that's nice and easy, right? So we render once the whole thing. And whenever there is an update, we only need to render that part of the sidebar. And we have the whole thing with us. Um, this gets really, really tricky <laughs> because some of these panels, they don't have a maximum size. They just take as much space as is left in your sidebar. So you tell it, I am 3,000 pixels high. Um, and they go, yeah, I need 3,000 pixels. And you say, OK, I'm 5,000 now. They, yeah, 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 I'm 5,000 now. Um, and there is no way to control them. So it, it becomes a nightmare. And what happens is that you need to do a little bit of uh, hackery where you say, um, if it's this kind of a, a deck, uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm no more than 600 pixels. You, you just need to, to do something and, and scroll or whatever, hide the, 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 the rest. Um, and so unfortunately, this, this kind of behavior of uh, never ending uh, you know, uh, uh, height um, gives you a useless sidebar like that um, in some cases that we had to spend a lot of time trying to fight it. And, and I'm fairly certain we haven't found all the cases. And this is a layouting um, nightmare, because what is really happening is the layouter is, is going through all the element, figuring out the, their, their height, and then comparing that with the height of the, the actual sidebar, which we set, and then figuring out, would they fit, yes or no? And if not, how much is the overflow? And then it's, it's, it's doing this at least twice. It's a two-pass um, algorithm. And ultimately, it decides whether to show the scroll bar or not. In this case, it decided to show it, and it's completely useless. Because it, you can only scroll it one pixel. That, that's it, right? It, it's just there to annoy you, or the user, right, in this case. Um, so this is, this is one of the, um, the, the, the nasty challenges that you don't really see on the desktop, but you get it here. And the reason is because we don't want the scrolling to happen um, in the um, back end. Rather, we want it to happen in the browser. Um, and with that, Thank you so much.